Good morning, good afternoon, and we definitely appreciate the time this afternoon here um, to kind of present to you um, kind of our second uh, part to this, uh, you know, uh, elevating um, your efficiencies within Starship Cloud and kind of learning more about uh, the differences really around the cloud application uh, versus on-prem infrastructure. Um, so if you are new um, to uh, this um, webinar series, welcome. Um, and if you have seen this in the past, right, uh, welcome again. And, and hopefully we can uh, speak with you all soon to kind of talk a little bit more about um, the importance of cloud applications and really where Starship is kind of going with that platform as well. So with that being said, I'm going to go right on into our agenda today. Um, again, I'm going to talk about a few different things, right? First, starting off with kind of the key challenges um, that we see with on-prem environments and speaking with many, many different customers and hearing from many customers kind of what some of those challenges are today. Um, then we'll kind of jump over and kind of talk about why customers have already began their cloud journey um, and kind of what you know they're seeing on their side as well. Um, and kind of what you can all see potentially uh, moving into that um, that cloud environment. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about why our Starship cloud application, you know, what benefits are you going to receive from that versus your current on-prem uh, infrastructure um, as well. And then uh, what all of you or most of you are probably aware of, we've been reaching out to in the last several weeks and months, um, is about really around OAuth 2.0. Um, and that's coming out from the carriers like UPS and FedEx. And there's um, dead set deadlines that they have given all of their accounts uh, to be authenticated by. And I'm going to go through a little bit about that as well, uh, because my team is reaching out to most of you, if not all of you, um, to talk a little bit more about that um, and the importance of getting on the right application, the right version of Starship to make sure that you can continue on using those carriers moving forward. Uh, we'll talk about that migration path looks like. And then we'll kind of talk about um, the implementation options you all have available to you as well. And then we'll turn it over to some Q&A at the end. Okay. All right. So um, really, I'm gonna, this slide is very busy and I'm not going to cover all of it um, here today. But really, I want to just point out just a couple things, right? What have we seen? What have we heard from customers um, as we're talking to them, getting a word of the cloud application? Um, really, it, it ranges anywhere from really hardware. Right, so the first thing up there is servers. Servers these days are being replaced every several years. They can cost anywhere really from a couple thousand dollars as a basic server, and it can go up to 20,000 plus dollars to replace a server. So again, you know, we've had customers replace servers recently or about to replace a server. That's where usually you wanna to speak to us about our cloud application and where that can benefit you as well. Um, again, all the additional costs, right? I know everyone likes to look at what they're paying on maintenance on their on-prem uh, and then look at what they would pay on the cloud. Uh, but we also have to take an addition, uh, a look at what those additional costs may be, right? And I've just listed a few of those out there and what other customers have talked about, really electricity costs, insurance, right? Um, just facility costs in general. Cybersecurity is a major, major one up there. Um, obviously, that is not inexpensive by any means, right? Everyone's trying to protect their in infrastructure from any sort of ransomware attacks and uh, other attacks being uh, out there from hackers. So again, that also adds into the on-prem infrastructure today. Um, maintenance, right? IT has to maintain all of this hardware. Um, that is something that is a big uh, cost to a lot of businesses. Um, so there are uh, obviously ways to address that by getting away from your current environments today from those you know servers running and really moving things into either a hosted environment or in our case like a full cloud environment so we don't have to worry about that and the IT staff can worry about other projects other business applications that can be added on for future growth. Um, local network is down right um, we've had this happen with certain customers where their their server just you know went out right um, and now they're down um, they don't really have a, a replacement option. Um, so again, they're basically, again, having the ability to be in a cloud environment, having somebody there to know that's running 24 seven, it's always being monitored, right? So you don't have that worrisome factor of having that happen to you. The other one I wanna point out here is relocation, right? Um, again, a lot of businesses are on the move. Um, basically, you might be looking to expand, you might be looking to move in, in general, Taking your in infrastructure today and moving it from one place to the next is very, very difficult. It's also very time consuming and very costly. 
Um, cloud environments allow you to pick up and go much quicker. Um, get up, you know, off and running in the new location you might be, you know, going to um, much faster. So again, you have that ability within a cloud environment that you don't really have with the on-prem, uh, which is again going to take a lot of planning, a lot of uh, man hours. Um, so you definitely have to keep that in mind as well as you kind of continue to grow and look for uh, additional facilities. So what what have we seen, right? As we talk to customers <clears throat> and we look at why are they starting their cloud journey or what have they seen here, right? Again, the VPN, RDP access, you don't need when you're accessing a cloud application like Starship. That all goes away. Accessing the ability to access data anywhere in the world, right? From a CEO all the way down to someone in shipping, right? They could be at home, they could be traveling. Um, Wherever they may be, they have access to that data without having the need to worry about a VPN or an RDP connection being made to the local machine. Significant reduction in IT expenses. A lot of folks on here might be in the IT um, arena, right? Um, and they could probably relate to this, right? But again, um, having a staff managing that infrastructure, that, that server, those clients, especially your desktop users today with uh, Starship, everybody has to get those upgraded each and every time it's a very time consuming process with a desktop application that you don't have the worrisome factor in the cloud environment today right so again as i listed here right you can have less staff less trainings required right um you basically have no upgrades or migrations of each application that goes away uh, when you move into a cloud environment as those happen automatically for you without having to worry about those planning uh, stages or what am I going to do the upgrade? How am I going to impact my my personnel? Right, all of that can kind of like just get significantly reduced for you. Increased margins, right? Again, because you're going to have less cost, the revenue is going to go up, right? Um, so basically, the margins are going to increase. Um, removal of the risk, uh, the removal of the risk of some cybersecurity threats. This is a big one. Unfortunately, you know, we had a few customers or a couple customers, I should say, in the last several weeks. Um, experienced this um, firsthand, um, you know, down a significant amount of time, right, before they can reestablish their business applications. Uh, that is very scary. It's very upsetting, um, you know. So, again, we want to remove that risk and really kind of bring it into the cloud environment for everybody. So, again, we don't have that same cybersecurity threat um, in our cloud in infrastructure that we're running in. Um, versus where you kind of are kind of open to the uh, environments, right? You may have, like I said, that software protecting you, but you know these these folks out there are getting smarter day in day, uh, day by day, um, to make sure that they can get into your system if they want to. Um, and again, ability to expand and add locations is quicker, right? As a company grows, right? With cloud, we can we can be very scalable. Um, so as you expand, we're going to expand with you. Um, so with on-prem, again, it's going to take planning, it's going to take infrastructure, new servers, new machines, that all adds cost to anyone's environment, okay? <clears throat> so why are, why are people going to Starship Cloud? Why are we seeing such a growth rate as we're seeing today in the, in the cloud application over our on-premise application? Um, it really comes down to these bullet points that are on this slide, right? It's going to include all carrier modules, all unlimited users. Right, so again, you don't have to worry about paying us per module fee, per user seat, prorated maintenance, install, right? All of that goes away um, when you use a cloud application. Um, we have a redesigned dashboard analytics tools. Again, if you're not custom to our dashboard, it's been all revamped um, with distribution maps, um, charts, and various reporting structure that gives you that insight that a lot of customers are missing when you're using the old desktop application, or if maybe you're using a separate application altogether. Um, so again, having that ability to have everything in front of you to run at any point in time is very, very useful. Um, receive a 15% discount every year that you go in and renew your, uh, your um, subscription. Minimal, you're gonna get a 15% discount when you prepay us for the year. Um, or it's gonna be a greater promotion, whatever that promotion might be running at that given month, you also are all gonna get uh, advantage of taking um, that offer as well, if you like. That's when you check in with your account manager, assigned to your account, have that conversation about what's running, what promotions, what specials, um, and you also will get that greater promotion that exists uh, that day. If it doesn't, 
you get the 15% off, which you don't have today in the on-prem world. Automatic upgrades. This is another big one, right? Again, it happens overnight. You come in in one morning, it's like nothing ever happened, right? You don't have to plan anything. You don't have to get multiple people involved. You're going to come in on Monday morning and everything's going to be up and running, right? It's the most you know wonderful thing for a lot of IT folks um, out there. Um, so you don't have to worry about all that unnecessary cost involved. Um, so that's just going to be part of your subscription. It's going to be automatically upgraded and off and running you go. Nice thing here, Starship is always going to be on the same version uh, or the, the most current version, I should say. Um, so you're never going to be falling behind, not being able to take certain features or enhancements we're putting into the product. Um, so that is something that's going to be awesome to see. And if you do have multiple locations, this is ideal. Right, um, especially when you have multiple locations set up, um, cloud is perfect for that kind of environment um, to be able to see various locations in one place, um, being able to toggle various reports, all that stuff is all built into the application very seamlessly uh, for you to take advantage of. So I'm gonna take a moment, right? And again, I'd say it said earlier, most of you have probably seen messaging from us, for myself even, um, around UPS OAuth, FedEx OAuth. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen this yet, um, you probably will be. You probably also got messages from carriers about these um, uh, mandates they've put out there. Um, but basically UPS um, is forcing, or not forcing, they're basically requiring um, all users, um, regardless of application, to be authenticated through the new OAuth 2.0 security protocol. Um, and FedEx is doing the exact same thing. Um, UPS, their uh, deadline is June 3rd, which is right around the corner, about a month and a half's time. Um, and basically, in order for our users to be compliant with these changes, um, our team has been hard at work for the last six to eight months, um, rewriting both APIs to support these changes. And with that being said, um, we need to make sure that if we are gonna remain on-prem, right, with our current infrastructure, um, the users here must have upgraded to version 24.0.3 um, as a minimum, which comes out on Monday uh, for 22. Uh, once that uh, happens, um, you also would need to migrate and configure the web UI application um, in order to go through the authentication process with UPS. Uh, you cannot authenticate your UPS account numbers or FedEx account numbers through the desktop application. So that's a very, very important factor. Um, once you have done that, you will be authenticated. You can continue on using um, the web client at that point if you prefer. You also have the ability of using the desktop as well um, if you prefer um, that option on the prem. But you have to authenticate those accounts through the web UI first and foremost. FedEx has pushed back a little bit um, to August, right? So their deadline is not set to August. This should say 31st is the little typo here. Um, but again, um, this must, you again, same concept. You must upgrade again in the end of May or early June when version 24.0.4 comes out. So essentially you have to do two upgrades here in the on-prem world um, to be compliant with both carriers. So within a couple months time, two upgrades, a web migration to the web UI, and you'll be compliant um, going forward. Or what most people are doing, migrating to Starship Cloud, right? Um, once we migrate you to Starship Cloud, we don't need to worry about, again, all these upgrades, the migration strategy, all of that stuff goes away. We basically put you onto the cloud um, infrastructure. You'll have all these access, these upgrades. You'll authenticate your accounts in that arena. So that is available to you all here as well, um, if you prefer. So I just wanna cover a couple points here and things you should know. Um, again, just wanna make everyone aware because most people probably on the call today are using our desktop application. Um, there has been no features or enhancements in the desktop application now for over a year. Um, there will be no further feature enhancements in the desktop application going forward. Um, all fixes, all feature enhancements are all being put into the web UI application along with the cloud application. Um, so again, the desktop is there, it's still supported, um, but just keep that in mind as you move forward and make a decision on which direction you're gonna go. Um, but again, I wanna make everyone aware that there are no more fixes or feature enhancements in the desktop 
uh, being provided at this time. Um, annual maintenance fees um, are really getting you access to support um, the troubleshoot issues only for desktop users again, right? So that's what you're paying annual maintenance for, not only your upgrade links, but also access to support. But those upgrade links are really doing you nothing just because there's no feature enhancements being put into the product. They're really meant for the web UI application and also that cloud application I mentioned. Um, again, I mentioned it before, right? But when we're comparing on-prem to cloud, the first thing that a lot of people like to do is to compare their maintenance fees to what they're gonna be paying in the cloud, right? Um, and most times the costs are very comparative. Other times you might pay a little bit of higher of a cost in the cloud upfront. Um, <coughs> however, as years go by, um, that annual fee, right, that you're gonna continue to pay for on-prem is gonna significantly rise much, much faster than the cloud application will. We, have, we anticipate about a 15 to 25% increase annually on-prem, uh, whereas cloud, you can be looking more about 5%. So um, these are just things out there, kind of very standard in the industry today. Um, but again, when you look at all of those costs associated, not just your maintenance, but also everything else that I mentioned earlier, from your um, current facilities, to cybersecurity, to what you're paying IT folks to manage the platforms, all of that combined is a significant expense to any business today, okay, versus running everything into the cloud application. So I just wanna give you a quick glance at what the new Starship UI looks like if you haven't had a chance to see it yet. Um, this is just a quick snippet of it. Um, we're happy to kind of demo this application for you as well. Um, my, any one of my team members can do that for you. Uh, but basically the nice thing here is everything's on one page, right? So if you look at it, we don't have tabs across the top any longer to you know, kind of click through and get to the rate shopping section and then to shipping. We work top to bottom, right? So everything's in one view from everything from the ship, you know, ship from, ship to, all the way down to the rate shopping. Um, so everyone can kind of move through it pretty quickly, a much more streamlined approach to get you through the process. Okay. This just to give you a quick glance at what the dashboard analytics looks like, right? This is just the front page of it, but this kind of shows you kind of your distribution map, um, various charts we can look at by how many, you know, shipments per user, total package counts, quick trends. We have a full report database here as well um, that we can run various reports um, that you can look at from late deliveries to address corrections to how much you're charging a customer versus how much you're quoting a customer or getting quoted by the carrier. So again, you have a lot of functionality built into here that you could take advantage of if you're having been doing that. And this is an example of one of those reports, right? Kind of showing you kind of applied versus contracted rates, right? Any variances and how do we modify rules, right? All of that is built into here for you. And then one of the other things too that you receive if you're not using it today is our e-notify feature. Um, e-notify is a way to customize your templates to notify your customers of their shipment that's coming to them. So you can brand this however you want, um, put any information you want into it, um, I've put in like tracking numbers with hyperlinks. You could put items being shipped, uh, order number, PO number, you name it. Um, pretty much all those Starship fields can be in here along maybe with like a future product announcement or maybe a, a coupon code for a future order uh, going forward. So you have that ability in here as well. So um, what happens if you're interested? What are the next steps, right? So I kind of laid out kind of what has to happen, right, for us to get you the appropriate information because everybody wants, you know, to know, hey, what's this going to cost me, right? Um, and we will definitely provide that information to you. But before we could, it's not just a one, you know, number for everybody, right? Everybody has different needs. So we have to kind of, you know, have a conversation, number one, right? So we kind of schedule a discovery call initially with one of my uh, team members that are on my team. Uh, we will go through, we will identify what is needed. Um, from there, we will schedule a demo if one is needed. Um, if one is not needed, we'll move into kind of a quoting stage. Um, and that's when you'll get your quote from us of what the costs look like for the cloud application if you're interested in moving that way. Um, and then also if you're wanting to stay with on-prem but move into the web UI only, um, we can also quote out that service and what that cost look like as well for you if that's something of interest. And then from there, you approve it, we move it forward, 
Um, we basically um, send out an invoice to pay uh, for the services. We get you onto our schedule and then we start the work. Um, and for the cloud application, we don't collect any licensing fees until 30 days after you start your project. So that is something important to remember. We don't collect everything up front like we did with on-prem, right? That won't be paid into the, into the portal that's set up for you until that 30 day mark ends um, once we um, have started that implementation. So there's two ways to implement here. Um, one, um, the popular one is on the right side, right? Where, hey, they want the VTech team to do it. The VTech team has the migration tools, which is also very popular these days, um, where we can take uh, about 60 to 70% of your data today and migrate it to the cloud, right? So there's a few pieces we can't migrate, but for the most part, all your mappings, your UDEFs, your uh, databases, et cetera, that can be all migrated into our cloud environment. Um, so that way we don't have to set it up from scratch. Um, so again, that team will do the data migration. They will do the setup for you. They will basically get everything tested and running, train users. That is basically um, what we provide to you from an implementation side. We are booking projects into about um, early to mid-May right now. And that is continuing to expand out as more people are coming onto the platform. Um, so the sooner you know, the sooner the you know, better off you're going to be. Um, the other option is for users to go through a self-onboard option. That is basically you taking a document from us and following the steps uh, and getting yourself basically up and running on your own. The difference there is basically you're not going to be able to migrate any data. You're going to have to start to set the platform basically from, you know, you're a new user, uh, unfortunately. Some people have decided that's the way they want to run anyway right? Just clean slate, no problem, right? If that's of interest, we can send you that document, take a look at it, and then go ahead and start to work on it on your own. However, I would not recommend this option for customers who are looking to implement EDI, hazardous, or any advanced setup measures. Um, it could get very tedious and kind of confusing uh, because there are steps there that we do need to take with other partners. Uh, in that case, especially with EDI, um, so again, I would not recommend that um, if you are in any of those situations, okay? And one final slide I have here really is around the cloud pricing. These are just the different areas that my team will be addressing when we talk about cloud pricing. It all comes down around package count, LTL shipment count. Those are the two biggest pieces. Yes, there's locations that we'll be asking you about if you have hazardous uh, needs, EDI needs, um, things of that nature, those will kind of come into play, but the primary two factors are the first two bullets around parcel and LTL shipments. So um, be prepared with those depth, those pieces of information because um, they will be asking you uh, for that. So they can depend on what you know volume that is will determine what tier you fall into from a pricing structure for us. Again, just want to say thank you. We appreciate the business, the loyalty over these years. And we definitely appreciate the time this afternoon. So we will speak again soon. Thanks, everyone.